Now, I want us to move straight ahead and look at how can we represent vectors quantities. Now, vector quantity, to represent vector quantity, uh, uh, I'll rub here. Yes. So, what we're saying is that when you want to present vectors, normally you'll use two capital letters or you can use a one small letter. Let me illustrate. This so this is a representation of vectors, representation of vectors, representation of vectors. Let me write that like that. And we are saying that you can represent a vector, say vector AB in that direction. So you've used two capital letters to denote vector. In this case, you are trying to tell us that the length of this vector is between point A and point B and the direction is from A towards B. For instance, you can draw that and say this is A, this is B. This is the length we are talking about. And then the direction is this way. So we will show with that arrow. So these vectors can be rep uh, represented as vector AB, which we are showing here. You can, for instance, represent vector CB, in which instance it means we are having a line from C towards B, and that is the direction, showing us that this vector, the direction is from C to B. Now, there are situations where our vectors can be represented by a single small letter. Say, you can find a vector written as vector A. Now, normally in typing, you'll write A, but a bold A. But when we are writing using our pens, it is normally A with a wavy line just below. So this is read as vector A. This is read as vector B. A. This is read as vector A. We could also have vector B. B with a wavy line just below it. We could also have vector C, which is a C with a wavy line just uh, below it. Now, we can get all this information and uh, write it in what we call a Cartesian plane. We can get this information and write it in what we call a Cartesian plane. Uh, for instance, for instance, drawing a Cartesian plane, you can draw a Cartesian plane this way. So this will be y-axis. Always remember to show that your Cartesian plane is continuous by drawing that arrow. Uh, this is x-axis. That is x-axis. Now, from here, we can draw any vector that way. And call here point A. Call that place point B. Now, from this, we can give it direction. So that is a vector quantity. And we can now decide to give this vector. Now, giving this vector, you'll say that we want vector A, B that way. So this is read as vector A, B. Now, giving vector A, B in this case, we'll be forced to know the coordinates of point A and also know the coordinates of point B. So I would very first have arbitrary points like that. Uh, let's call this is one, two, three, four, five. That way, we can also have arbitrary points one, two, three, four, five. In which case, we'll have one, two, three, four, five. Now, using this, we can get the coordinates of A, which are normally given first of all by the x coordinate followed by the y coordinate. So we will have one in this case, and 1. So we have point A being 1, 1. Point B, in this case, would be x-axis. We would have 4 followed by, uh, let me just write it here, 4 followed by the x, the, the y-coordinate, 3. So we have two points, A, and then we also have B. So we have A11 and B43. 
Now, working with this, we can get AB. And getting AB means we have to see how was, how, by how many units has A been displaced or moved towards B. Now, in that case, we'll find that A is at 1 and B is at 4 when you look at the x-axis only. So, this will tell us that the units between 1 and 4 is 3 units. So, putting this, uh, we can write vector AB as 3 units to show us how we have moved on the x-axis and write vector write the second part as so we will check we've moved from one up to three on the y-axis so we can show that one up to three that is difference in units of two units so we can say that in y-axis the movement from a to b was actually two units so we can represent this vector and say that our vector a b is actually three two now Normally when you are giving vectors, especially when you are using coordinates, make sure that you give both the x, this is the x units, and also make sure that you give the y units. So you check by what units are we moved from one point to another when you are considering the x values, and when you are considering the y values, by what units have we moved from one, uh, one place to another. So basically, this is how we present vectors. I uh, told you that we can use capital letters and show direction when you are presenting vectors. And still you can use small letters and show direction. Now, to use small letters and show direction, for example, in this case, Suppose we had another line starting from point zero zero, which is the origin here. Say this line is represented by O D. That is the direction. Now, in this case, this is called a position vector because it starts from the origin or the center of the Cartesian plane. So normally we use the last letter, for example, O D. We are moving towards D. So D here is the last letter, O is the first one. We normally use this last letter to give that vector a name. For example, this vector would simply be called vector D. Normally when you're only using one letter, use a small letter. In a situation, for example, where you have another line, say, you have another line, say, let me just rub here so that you're able to see it clearly. You have a Cartesian plane like that. You have x-axis. You also have y-axis. You can have another vector, say this. So this is point zero zero. I've just told you that these are called position vectors because they start from the origin. Uh, towards, say, point B. Now, B is the ending point here, and we are moving from A towards B. This vector is a position vector, and instead of writing OB, vector OB, which of course is still correct, we can simply write this vector as vector B with a small wavy line just below the small letter B. So that is how we can uh, present vectors. That is how we can uh, represent vectors. Thank you.